Hi, this is Charles Kelly. Hope you're having a great day. Now, today I want to talk to you about home repossessions and why home repossessions are at a record low. Uh, the number of houses being repossessed by banks plummeted to a record low in the second quarter of this year. And the Ministry of Justice said that, you know, obviously the, the unprecedented low levels were due to government measures introduced to, to help homeowners and stop banks uh, uh, repossessing by, by offering a mortgage payment holiday. Similar rules were applied to, to landlords trying to uh, repossess uh, or, or evict tenants and get their homes back. Um, that, that There were no homes possessed you know, from April to June, which is very unusual. Normally there'd be you know, hundreds of cases going through the courts at any one time. And the number of mortgage possession orders dropped by 96%. So I mean, it was only 149 mortgage possession orders in that in that period. Landlord possession claims fell by nearly 90% as well. Now the government introduced a number of measures, obviously to to enable people to stay in their homes uh, if their their incomes were hit during the coronavirus pandemic. They obviously didn't want uh, you know mass homelessness uh, that they were you know they're enough on their plate without local authorities having to house people uh, if if. You know, thousands and thousands of people were were made homeless, uh, so it, it it was a difficult situation, and you, you can't blame the government for for bringing in something like that, uh, even though obviously it's it's had to be paid for one way or another by either the banks or by landlords sometimes not receiving any rents. Uh, landlords also, if they've got a mortgage, can apply for a, a payment holiday, uh, or have have applied. I mean. Uh, Something like two million people have applied for, for for some form of payment holiday, but some landlords don't have a big mortgage. They they rely on their properties for for, for rent, uh, for for income maybe during retirement, uh, or they're a professional landlord that live off of their rents. They're not, you know, they, they don't necessarily have any mortgage at all, or maybe just small mortgages. Uh, now the government um, passed what, what's called a coronavirus act, which uh, put a temporary halt on all possessions. All, all activities relating to possessions initially for three months uh, and, and later until the 23rd of October. Uh, they, ex they, they then, the, 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 the ban on uh, evicting tenants was supposed to, to end uh, yesterday on Sunday, but they extended that uh, just, just on Friday, two days before the, the end. And I, I, I did a post on that last Friday. It was like an 11th hour U-turn. Um, landlords now can't uh, start eviction proceedings against tenants, even if, if the tenancy is subject to antisocial behaviour or they're in arrears with the rent. Um, I, I would say that uh, you know a tenant could probably not pay their rent for the next year and, and still not be out of the property uh, the way things are going. Uh, because two million homeowners and landlords have applied for some sort of mortgage payment holiday since the, the initiative was first launched. Um, Re repossessions obviously will re resume once the, the this ban is is lifted, but you, we're going to have thousands in, in a backlog, uh, thousands of cases. Um, then it takes more time once you've got the order to to enforce that order. I, I've issued orders against tenants before, and they just ignore it and and they wait for enforcement. And how long is that going to take when when the courts are? You know, up to their neck in it, and it will just be backed up. The Ministry of Justice and judges have said they need more help with this, and certain groups and people like Shelter have said that you know they they almost want to stop you repossessing your homes. You know, uh, that they, they want to give a tenants carte blanche and just let them stay there. Uh, it, it's got that crazy. Uh, so, you know, that that's the situation at the moment. I I, I think it, it it could be nine months to a year before you could get possession of a property if a tenant is not paying their mortgage. Now, if you're a tenant and your your mortgage payment or you're a borrower and your mortgage payment is coming to an end, uh, what should you do? Well, I think you need to keep talking to your lender. Um, lenders uh, can, um, you know, get, be, be flexible. They can give payment holidays. Um, in my experience, many of them are not that flexible, but they can be, especially in this market. Uh, but do open those letters. Don't bury your head in the sand and, and let it go. Always talk to your lender and say, look, I can't do this. Now, as I said, they can, in theory, issue voluntary re repayment holidays. Um, they, they could also accept reduced payments. They could also switch your mortgage from a repayment where you pay back interest and capital to just an interest only, uh, which is generally not allowed for 
people buying homes. It used to be, but they, they don't give them any more. But they're innate, they are able to switch to interest only during periods where you're in difficulty. Um, so that could help. Um, you know, they could also extend the mortgage. You could ask them to extend your mortgage. Say if you've got a 20 or 25 year mortgage, you could maybe ask for a 35 or 40 year mortgage. That can reduce payments, but not as much as it would if you went interest only. Um, so that, that, that's the situation with lenders. You, you, you know, you can also talk to your landlord, keep in touch with your lender. Say, look, I, I want to pay the, the, the rent, but I, I just can't at the moment. And, and surely landlords can understand the situation. Uh, and, and many landlords are have been very, very flexible with, with their tenants. Um, now, low interest rates have definitely helped the situation. It's prevented hundreds of thousands, I would say, mortgage borrowers in the last 10 years from losing their homes. Uh, and that's since the last financial crisis because rates came down after the 2008 crisis and have stayed very low. They've stayed at almost zero for, for years in, in the UK and America. And in the previous four recessions I lived through, interest rates always went up. I remember paying 16 and a quarter percent on a mortgage uh, and that crippled people. You know, it, it, it literally sent uh, interest rates through the roof and repossessions through the roof. You know, I, I, I mean, even my own anecdotal way, I, I knew people were losing their homes. I, I knew of repossessions going on in the area. You know, you just had to look in the papers It was the, and of the bankruptcy notices and uh, possession notices. It was just rampant. It was just terrible. That was the, the recession, uh, I, I'd say, in the 80s and the 90s. There were two bad recessions where uh, I remember interest rates going up and it was, a, it was a real killer. Fortunately, we've had low interest rates, which has prevented much of this. Uh, unfortunately, it's allowed people in the last 10 years to just think everything's going to be fine and we'll just go on a spending spree. You know, we'll just remortgage our house and do this and do that. Um, and, and that's that's led to this 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 problem, because someone someone said recently that the COVID-19 is, is not the real problem with recession. The COVID-19 is the, is the pin that pricked the bubble of, of what was already uh, an overblown economy and only took that small thing. And I was saying this for for the last couple of years that it can only take some event or some pinprick of, to, to burst the bubble sometimes this could be a banking crisis it could be an oil crisis it could be a war but in this case it, it's been the coronavirus thing we were already in problems before this and that's why i think it would take a long time for the problems to be to be sorted out now there's a trade body in the in the finance world called uk finance it's obviously urged uh, homeowners to resume full mortgage repayments well they would say that they represent the banks and the lenders if they can afford to do so and and you should do you, you should try and pay your mortgage uh, because you don't want this to be on your record it might even appear on your credit file in in, in future they've said it won't but you never know that these, these things can easily be registered in arrears missed mortgage payments it's on your credit file then for years and years and it could affect your ability to get another mortgage now despite all these measures homelessness has by no means been eliminated I know at the start of the lockdown they said they want everyone off the streets, but I was in central London just over the weekend. I was shocked to see the amount of people sleeping in doorways and on the streets, just sleeping rough. Some of them uh, look they were they were disabled. They're in a wheelchair with, with their stuff on on in a, in a doorway in, in London, in in the most expensive part of London. Um, and I've seen this before. Obviously, there's been homelessness forever, you know, but I've I've not seen it on this scale before so uh, you know it, it's by no means eliminated and I, I want to talk to you about uh, universal credit in a, in a future episode uh, if you've had experience with universal credit as a landlord or a borrower let me know and we can perhaps uh, have a chat and do, do an interview on this because uh, I, I don't think it's by, by any means ended and and this recession I think will go on for, for a long time because um, as I said earlier that there were problems before that you know we've seen retail uh, outlets closed but retail was already in trouble and, and many large businesses were already in trouble and I think we're going to have to see increased taxation and re reduction in, in public services. I think we're going to see massive cuts in government spending and uh, a reduction in in the size of government frankly. I, I, I really can't see any other way out of it because this printing money can't go on forever. It's got to end sometime Otherwise, you'll just have rampant inflation like you did in Germany in the 30s or in Venezuela recently. Um, so it, something's got to, got to give. And I think we're going to have to reduce the size of 
the, the government really, uh, the civil service, the councils. I mean, frankly, uh, a lot of these councils could be merged and abolished and, and just become part of another council. You know, that would save millions of pounds per, per local authority. Uh, I mean, a chief executive in a, in a, in a council representing, say, 100,000 people can earn well over £100,000. With their pension and their benefits, it can be more like £130,000, £140,000. You know, and in one county, which is a bigger area, in case you don't know the, the country, you might have a county, and then within that county you might have 10 borough councils, most of them unnecessary. So you can imagine 10 chief executives you know, in, in that, that area. You know, that's uh, you know, £1.5 million of salary, just that. Then you have a finance director on a similar salary and a director of this and a director of that. You know, I, I would say you could save 10 million to 20 million just on executive salaries in, in one county alone. Uh, and, and, you know, how many counties are there in the country? There's hundreds. And, and that doesn't in include the duplication of staff, uh, administration staff. And, and, and you know, it, it would run into hundreds of billions, I, I would say. You could save on government spending because at the moment you've got nearly half the people in the country are, are, are employed by the government in one way or another by quangos by governments you know um, and that's not productive that what does that what does that produce it's just tax it's just taxation in, in a way it's just sucking money out of the economy and and taking away incentives to work so you know those and, and the pension liabilities as well from those run into to hundreds of billions so I think that's got to be looked at you can't just print money and then uh, just have all these government departments who are really unproductive. They, they don't produce money in terms of going out and starting a business, producing goods, manufacturing, uh, selling services overseas. That's what brings in money into the economy, not employing people via the government or, or via government bodies and quangos. And then say, look, look at the unemployment. We have low unemployment. Well, if, if half the people are employed by the government, yeah, of course it's going to look great. Uh, but it doesn't work. And, and I think all through Europe and America, we've got that kind of economy, which is why countries in Asia are, are racing ahead. They don't have that sort of burden that, that we have here. And, and that's what I think has, has got to change. So anyway, more of that. That's a bit of a rant, I suppose. Uh, but, but I think it, it's an important point to realise that we can't go on like this. We've got to do something. Otherwise, the whole system will, will end up collapsing. So thanks for listening. Hope you've had a, have a great evening. And do, 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 do check in. Uh, please press the like button if you're watching this on uh, Facebook or if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, it does help with the algorithms, etc. And please contact me if you, if you need any help with investment ideas or uh, if you, I'm not a financial advisor, but I'm a property investor. And, uh, you know, I can help you in, in many other ways that don't involve selling you bonds and, and insurance products. Uh, I'm, I'm more of a, a wealth coach, if you like. But please contact me if you need any help with courses or anything to, to, to maybe build a second income in property and online. So thanks for listening and have a great evening. Bye for now.